Hello everybody, it's Itamog217. Welcome to a LEGO Disney 100th Anniversary set review. Take a look at set number 43217, The Up House. This set that released on April 1st of 2023 contains 598 pieces and technically three minifigures. So here we have The Up House. Um, <laughs> a lot of fans have been asking this for a lot of years and it's great that we finally get this set, but it's not one of my favorites. From the front, it looks visually appealing, and you would say that that's all you need for a set like this at the $80 price point, if I'm correct. But you turn it to the side, and the issues start to appear. You have literally a quarter of the house. Why did I say a quarter? Well, here's some pictures for reference from in the movie itself. Now, why is only a quarter of the house the issue, given the price point? Well, right off the bat... Yeah, it's got some details in there, but my biggest issue is uh, one of the included minifigures, Russell, can't really fit in here at all with his backpack. You can't really display him anywhere, and the same thing goes for Mr. Fredrickson. The only place you can really put him is at the back, standing right there, or sitting in his chair. And uh, oh, that doesn't necessarily bode well for me in, my, in terms of what I'm thinking about this set, because at first I was looking forward to owning this set, but after building it and having it in my possession for a while now, these that is my biggest nitpick, is you can't really display the minifigures, uh, properly at least. And so it kind of makes me question why we have a quarter of a house. Um, like, because I know a lot of people are expecting, oh, we if we have half a house, we can just do a mirror build and do the back. No, you get a quarter of the house, so not even that. So definitely would have added a bit to the detail if uh, there was more house to this, because again, you'd have more display options for the house. But anyway, uh, the, the details on this set, let's go over them. This set is filled with tons of Easter eggs throughout the build, as you guys can probably see. Uh, at the top right there, uh, for the first main area, you have some stickered elements uh, that are shown in the movie, which is pretty cool. It's not accurate at all to where it's placed in the movie. For example, this whole fireplace area is at the back uh, where a wall would be right here if, you know, the house was extended a little bit by, I don't know, to make it half a house. But for some reason, they just kind of put it in there. You have the famous little bird and, you know, the compass, some mail. And I really like how this record player is done. It uses the miner's hat piece, which uh, is pretty cool build technique, not going to lie. And then if you can zoom in just a little bit, you have a little jar for Paradise Falls. And I do believe if you take that out, there is some money at the back, which is a cool little detail. But again, everything is really tucked in here, so it's a little hard to see all the details. But moving on to the other floor, you just have a stickered element for the uh, one side of the door, and there is elements on the other side. You have this clock, which is pointing at 10 after 4, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, you do have another stickered element right there, which is cool, I guess. Moving up to the second floor, you have a bed, which has some nice brick techniques, as well as another sticker. And then for the other floor, you have a TV which shows uh, the main film that was inspiration for Carl for the Adventurers Club and whatnot. And uh, you do have a little crate tucked back here. And inside the crate, removing it, you can see there is a My Adventure Book. Now, I actually am not a fan of this adventure book because you flip it up and it just uses the regular Once Upon a Time tile, no fancy printed tile exclusive to this set. And also the book doesn't open this way in the movie, so it's kind of... A weird way of going about it. I feel like a new piece was probably needed for this set and they just kind of cheaped out. But anyway, uh, for the front of the build, you can see there is that sticker design as well. Uh, technically, there's supposed to be some steps right here because, again, it's supposed to be elevated a little bit. So, again, another way they cheaped out on this build. This technique right here, they pulled this off, is really nice and fun, but... Eh. Again, there's only so much this can go for. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, this is, if this is only a quarter of the house, why can't you just display this up against a wall of sorts and have it like that? Well, that's where the balloons become an issue. Yes, it's nice that this house has balloons attached because that's iconic for the up house. The balloons do feel a little bit undersized for this undersized build. I guess it's fitting, but um, you could definitely modify this to have bigger balloons, but it would be a bit of a chore. So I guess you could imagine this is like the opening scene when the house is first taking off, but again, modifications are are needed to be done for that and again why you can't really display this flat against a wall smokestack as well as these balloons are a main issue because if you kind of see right there as it flat against the wall the balloons kind of stop it from actually being flat against the wall so that will 
cause some issues with how you display this set. Anyway, let's have a look at the side build really quickly, and then we'll have a look at the minifigures. For the side build, you just have a fence with some balloons on it, as well as an air tank, helium tank, I guess, filling up a balloon, a little box, I guess, full of balloons, a squirrel, and a mailbox, which kind of would have been nice if the mailbox would have had a print or anything of that sort with the handprints. That would have been nice, you know, just maybe even a sticker. I could, That's the one way I could probably justify there being a sticker on a piece like this, but anyway... Yeah, not much else to this side build. I mean, like, it kind of feels awkward displaying this next to the set. Like, this is probably the best way to display it next to the set. And even then, that feels kind of awkward, if you ask me. Anyway, let's have a look at the minifigures. All right, for the first two minifigures, we have Doug and Mr. Fredrickson. Uh, well, technically, Doug isn't a minifigure. He really should be his own minifigure entry. Because, uh, again, it's a new, unique molded piece, which I think could be a one-off. And it does have some dual molding. It's a really cool piece. I can see why some people want him standing. But I think sitting is just where he's best at in terms of being a Lego piece. And he is a singular Lego piece at that. And that's fine. Again, you can't really fit Doug in the house either because he is a chunky piece, let alone with the side build. So he's just kind of loose. Anyway, uh, Mr. Ferguson looks pretty cool. Uh, I kind of wish he would have had a molded nose. And don't say that you, Lego couldn't have done that. Pinocchio is a figure that exists. Easily could have done it. No excuses in my mind. Anyway, uh, he does have a cool little facial print uh, as well as a torso print. They're both exclusive. He does have a double-sided facial expression, which is a much happier expression, which is pretty cool, admittedly. But um, yeah, not much else to say about this. I like how they pulled off his cane with some building techniques. Uh, I like it. It's cool. And I like the use of mid-legs. Anyway, let's have a look at the final figure. Who is none other than everyone's favorite wilderness explorer? Russell and I like how this figure turned out like uh, he's got some dual molded arms and quadruple molded legs miniature legs at that those look really cool I think that's the first time Lego's probably done something like that and they executed it perfectly I do like that new hair hat combo piece I feel like if we got the Temple of Doom set short round probably would have had this hair piece in a white hair uh or cap I mean but uh yeah he's I like the backpack as well you got the bugle the binoculars the pan the fork and so much stuff. I kind of would have liked if they would have included a little shovel and uh, a one by one cylinder brick. Just, you know, I'll recreate that iconic funny scene. Uh, but anyway, removing the backpack, you're able to get a better look at the back torso print, which uh, my copy looks a little bit weird on the bottom there. But hey, Lego does what Lego does. But you also have a double sided facial expression for him, which I love. And I also love the detail that they live, we have a little spot for. Uh, the badge that he is yet to achieve for helping the elderly. Anyway, not much else to say about this amazing minifigure. Let's have a look at what else this set includes, shall we? Taking a look at the very large instructions, uh, apparently I forgot to mention that there is a total of 12 different stickers in this set. So anyway, uh, you do have the uh, QR code if you want to build the set digitally, a weird rendition of the build. Flipping open, you got the usual Lego stuff at the front there, but uh, you do have Russell as the progress bar. Kind of would have wished if it was Mr. Fredrickson, but eh, it's okay. It's one of the figures, I guess, but yeah, pretty straightforward building techniques. Flipping all the way to the back, though. You have the completed model, a page advertising Disney princesses. Kind of should have been Disney 100 sets if you ask me, but anyway. Page rebuild for Rebuild the World. Parts listing that goes on for two pages. And then a Lego Friends at the back? That's weird. In terms of extra parts, this is all that I got in my copy of the set. Overall, for an 80 Canadian dollar set, I can't recommend this set whatsoever. Sure, I will praise the minifigures uh, tell this tell forever, but I, uh, for being great with just unique prints and molds and whatever. But $80 for an incomplete build where you get a quarter of the house. I can't, uh, I can't keep stating that enough. There, it's just not worth your money like if it was half a build i'd say okay sure but the fact you can't even display your minifigures on this frustrates me and especially for that price point i'd even go as far as say create your own mock of this maybe grab the sticker sheet create your own mock of this grab the figures they're going for like 40 bucks i think as the time it's recording so you're paying half the set for the build and half the set for the minifigs whatever it's just uh, i just i can't recommend this as much as i want to recommend this i can't there's just too many issues in my mind for this so this is definitely one of those things you're gonna have to pick up if it hits clearance if it will and even then this unfortunately will probably the only be 
only iteration legal will do for a few years until they decide to do a modular version if they do go that route anyway that's all just me speculating and rambling on yeah no just don't pick this up i can't recommend it that's more or less the gist of it so yeah <laughs> let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this review hit that like button subscribe if you're new to the channel all that fun stuff anyway thank you everyone so much for watching i'll see you all in a future video till then see you later Bye bye